In this video, I would like to demonstrate partial discharge background noise. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the cheapest and most easy to get partial discharge detector. It's not a measurement system, it's a detector. And here it is. It is an old AM FM radio, probably something around three or four decades old. And I'm going to use the AM part here. And I dialed it to 530 kilohertz. And this is a frequency band where we are measuring partial discharges. It's not exactly the frequency band. If you want to learn more about it, here's a video about it. But 530 kilohertz is among the frequencies where we are going to measure partial discharge. So I'm going to turn this on very soon and it's going to make a lot of noise and I'm going to pick it up with my microphone here. So if you're listening to this video with headphones, you might consider turning down the voltage right now in order to figure out how much noise you can bear. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that we can detect partial discharge with that. I have uh, my high voltage transformer here. I'm going to create corona discharges. I hope that you can see it with the camera. I'm not quite sure about that, but at least you can hear it. And then we are going to approach a couple of noise sources. This being said, I'm in a basement here right now and have pretty shielded walls. And therefore, if I turn this on, you won't hear much. A little bit, but you won't hear much. This being said, I had to turn off some lights in here because I do have LED lights uh, for my uh, video recording that work uh, with regu regu regulated power sources. And this would create noise as well, but I'm going to demonstrate that. So first things first, let's listen to it on how Corona sounds. So we already hear some noise. And um, I'm going to turn on my high voltage source. So this is already resilient noise that comes from the power supply. And now I'm going to turn this on. You will see a blue light. And here up here, this is where the corona will be seen. And I do not know how well you can see it with the camera, but we will find out. So. Let's do that again. The transformer needs a while in order to build up the voltage. Congratulations, a partial discharge detector. So unfortunately, not only partial discharge detector, will couple into the AM radio or um, emit frequency in this frequency band. Unfortunately, it is the, volt the power supply as well. So if I turn on the power for the power supply now, So what part is the power supply? What part is the corona? Well, I'm going to turn off the partial discharge, putting it here. I'm going to turn it on now. I'm literally, it's not connected to the power grid now. I'm turning it on. And then later on, I'm going to turn on the corona. Not very nice, but at least I was able to demonstrate that with such a device we were able to catch not only partial discharges happening, but also noise. And as very often it is that um, it's dependent on the distance between the noise source and your partial discharge detector or your detector in this case. I have a couple of other voltage sources here I would like to show you. So let's see how this works out. So next thing I have is I have a power supply for my laptop. I'm going to plug this in. It is not connected to the power grid yet because I have a switchable uh, power outlet. And I'm going to turn this on and we're going to hear what's happening. Even 
take this out. There's still charge in there, so let us discharge this. Charge is gone. Not very pleasant, but this is, as you can see, a device that can pick up electrical noise. I said almost every electrical device creates noise and this counts for my phone as well. My phone is on airplane mode right now and the screen is off. I'm going to put it next to the radio. I'm going to turn on the screen and you will hear what happens. And then I will actually take it out of airplane mode and it will try to connect uh, to the GSM network, which it won't be able to do because I don't have reception in here. But it's a really nice demonstration. So watch out. Monitor on. And airplane mode off. So, what does it tell you? Keep your phone off during partial discharge measurement. So, what did you just learn? Well, first of all, an AIM radio is a really cheap partial discharge detector. Second of all, we realized that a lot of things make noise. For example, your phone, your computer. So the idea of uh, keeping the cable connection between your measurement instrument and your quadrupole as short as possible is an idea. However, your computer itself actually creates noise and it shouldn't be so close to your measurement device. So yes, I know, it's kind of hard. Um, furthermore, don't keep your cell phone too close. Fortunately, the bigger the distance, the smaller the influence, but Still, there are quite a lot of devices that emit in the frequency range where we are going to measure partial discharges in some kind of frequency that can consider to be noise. So if you look at the blackboard again, or at the whiteboard, we talked about that we can have different kinds of airborne noise that can, of course, couple into our test object. We talked about this before. It can couple in this test object, but it can also couple in our high voltage connection. It can couple into our blocking impedance. It can couple into our voltage source. So as a matter of fact, noise is everywhere. And this is one of the biggest challenges. We have to fight noise in order to make a proper partial discharge measurement. There are some manual things you can do. One of the most important ones is the blocking impedance. That is the reason it is actually required by the IEC 6270. And fortunately, most digital devices give you a possibility to reduce the noise in one way or the other. Some of them do it automatically, some of them you do it manually, digitally, and uh, some of the devices, once you've recorded the measurement, give you a possibility to, po to post-processing in order to reduce the noise or at least say, okay, well, this part is noise and this part is partial discharges. This being said, if the noise is too high and it comes into your measurement device and it's the, the amplitude in the in the preamplifier or in the analog digital converter and the input is bigger than your partial discharges, then you're doomed. The, if the noise is bigger, you do not measure partial discharge. Even a, a discrimination afterwards is not that easy or even possible. Well, I don't want to scare you too much. Uh, you will realize there are always ways to measure and um, especially if you're not on site, but you're in a laboratory, very often we use shielded rooms in order to measure there, which reduce the partial discharge background noise that comes from outside. And that is the reason, for example, do not take your phone inside or take, uh, turn your phone off before you go in there or while you're doing the measurement. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye bye.